Now this is Hollywood Unlocked. Yo, what up, everybody? It's Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. I'm Jason Lee. I'm Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. Yeah, I was DJ Damage. Yo, and I don't know how I haven't seen this person ever in the streets. <laughs> uh, Yvette Nicole Brown is in the building. Yeah. What's up, brother? Yo, and she came in shitting on every single guest. Floyd, Cardi, <laughs> Tiffany. Uh, no way. She has the culture needs we sweat no. on. But, but that's it what it is. is. That is so Let awesome. Them know. It's true, though. It's true. I love this sweatshirt. No, mm-hmm. thank you. I bought it with my own money. Listen, but that's what th- this is my whole thing. We have to support one another. We do. Yeah. Like this is a symbiotic relationship that we all have. I feel like we not only create the culture, but we drive the culture. It's so mm-hmm. true, brother. And it's we true. all need each other. That's I don't true. know. What do you feel like that's lacking these days? You know, I feel like there are those that get it and those that don't. And those that don't, God bless, you know, work your stuff out. But I just feel like my whole life I've been a celebrator and a cheerleader of other people. If somebody has something that is amazing, I'm like, yay. So when I went to your page and saw that you were selling merch and I'm like, and it's merch like this. I was like, I'm going to support. Oh, yeah, well, so, well, and, it's tr- and it's true, too. So Listen, you know. I really appreciate that. My that, pleasure. I mean, she just, I mean, if I had something I was going to say crazy in the show, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> but I did. You know, one of my favorite shows is The View. I watch every day. Yeah. I watched it before I got here. And you're regularly on the show. Why are you not a View co-host yet? You know, they shoot in New York. And mm-hmm. um, I take care of my dad. My dad has dementia. I take care of him. Oh. So the idea of moving him and my whole life to New York would be very tough. But, mm. you know, when they call, the last time I did it, like two weeks ago, they called like Thursday and said, can you do it Friday? I'm like, I'm in New York. I mean, I'm in L.A. And they were like, can you get on a red eye? I was like, I surely can. So, <laughs> so sometimes you just pop on a, a plane and go. So it's kind of that kind of situation. I love it over there. That show has a lot of visibility. I mean, everybody watches The View, right? Mm-hmm. It does. And the best thing about last time is I went right after I got nominated for the, the writing for the Image Award. Mm-hmm. So I was like, if I come, guys, can we can we kind of shout out the movie? Yeah, and, yeah. and they were like, yeah, we nominated too. We'll shout us both out. I was like, good. So it just was really, the, it was a symbiotic situation in that moment. But it's kind of, it's kind of hard in this uh business especially you, you're you're really in the business mm-hmm. i mean i'm kind of like on the outskirts you're with in my, the business I'm on, I'm on the outskirts with my opinion she's a working actress but she's a working she actress but and host i mean you're all in there yeah and, you know a show like that where you're supposed to give your opinion it could go left no i don't i don't think so let me tell you why i think that as long as what you say is the truth and you can back it up you're fine you're only in trouble on any show like The View when you just say something you think is cute mm-hmm. or say something or you think is popular. Mm-hmm. If you don't have the receipts to back up your, your point or the backbone to stand up when it gets rough, because mm-hmm. it gets rough. Yeah. My Twitter, my mentions, we have held funerals for them many times. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but I rise like a phoenix every time. Well, that's because you're a Leo. Yeah. Brother. You a Leo? Leo? What's your birthday? August 16th. August 12th. Brother. Listen, Come that's on. what I'm saying. Yeah. That's why all of you, I don't know what you're a Scorpio. I, I, I don't know listen, what you. I, I am actually the phoenix because I'm a Scorpio. All We're right. the sign of death and rebirth, but yes. you guys can borrow that for yes, a second. Yes, you are. Okay. Actually, so Scorpios then, are the more, sign of death. Death and rebirth. Thank you. Death and rebirth. Exactly. Listen, yeah. I almost died and I was born again. You know, yeah. you Illuminati motherfucker, you tried to take me out. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, wait, so, so, I have a problem. Well, first of all, okay. Illuminati, if you're listening, I've sent you my P.O. box. Send, <laughs> you know me, send me whatever I need to get signed you up. You better not be asking to No, join. but she she almost died in a car accident. The oh fan said that she I sacrificed her, but she's yeah. back, so. You know, she's apparently, back. It, it didn't work, Jason. It didn't work. Okay, so listen, we're going to put yes. you to the test. Let's of, do it. Of, of, of expressing your opinion. Let's do it. Of a hot topic that was trending and was very, very, okay. very sensitive. <clears throat> okay. Gail King's interview with Lisa Leslie. Okay. Bringing out, bringing up the rape allegations against Kobe. Mm-hmm. A lot of people expressed their. Um, dis- S- Snoop you know, said, "You dog face bitch. I'm gonna send. I'm gonna come get you." Basically, yeah. So she was getting death threats and whatnot. What mm-hmm. is your perception of um, of of that interview? Gail said. I, as a journalist, I had to ask these ask these mm-hmm. kinds of questions. What's your perception after watching it and then seeing, you know, the aftermath? Okay, I have a journalism degree. Ooh, so, yeah, that's what oh I studied. In college. Okay, so oh, there we so, go. So we got a professional. Here we go. go. Okay, Yvette, right. before yes. you leave, I'm getting your phone number. Let's do it. Right okay. Okay. It happened. Okay. You didn't okay. feel it he travels too much. I'm here all the time. <laughs> all, we got. Let's hang have out. You okay. all can have it. Okay. Um. So I do agree that. When you do an interview, just like when you guys do your research, you dig up everything that you can. Now, that said, I do feel like there's a time and place for everything. I feel that when someone has passed away, can we can we 
can be we reverent? Yeah. Can we grieve them? Can we like if everybody in this Some. room has one or two things that they've done that God would be horrible if it was ever brought up, but surely if it was brought up a day, a week, three days after you pass, it would be really devastating to those that love you. So mm -hmm. it's really more about a respect of the people that are still here than even trying to have that hard hitting interview. And mm -hmm. the other thing is, I just don't think that Lisa's the one to have the conversation with. Mm -hmm. Like I I, I hear what Gail is saying when she said that she w went to his friend because she wanted to give his friend a chance to speak lovingly of him. And I do believe that was her goal. But at the same time, she kind of got Lisa in some stuff that Lisa didn't really have nothing to do with. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, Kobe's gone. We had all these years to drag up whatever you want to drag up. Mm -hmm. uh, in a court of law, mm -hmm. it was dismissed. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we need to let stuff that's done be done mm -hmm. so. we've been we've been very vocal here about like i feel well i have a mixed reaction because one we talked about it before the whole snoop thing went down right mm -hmm. on one hand i think you know where we're because i saw the whole interview mm -hmm. if you take it in context with the whole interview yeah. there was one question that was i felt improper was when she said well you wouldn't see it yeah, that that, that, got no, me that was too. just that the, the ad lib. Well, she she, like her she could have easily flipped that and said, "Do you think, as his friend, you could have seen it?" Right. Mm -hmm. But my thing is, why are we even talking about I it? I agree. Mm -hmm. Because the man and his daughter, and his daughter died mm -hmm. and has not even been and buried. And his other yet. daughters and his wife are will watch that. They might yeah. watch an interview with Lisa Leslie about him. And I'm not saying that we should just paint over anything everybody's done. I just feel like there's a time and place. I also don't think that Gail is sitting somewhere trying to destroy people. Mm -hmm. I just don't believe that. I think that sometimes people do things that they step in it and then they got to deal with the uh, with the aftermath. But I don't I don't think that she's a mean spirited person. You know what? But, you, but, but you've been mm -hmm. at a level now where you've been in ABC. You've been up there yeah. with the view. That's 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 middle America yeah. at its greatest. Don't you feel, though, that sometimes it's it's like when our people something ha would die or something happens, it's easy to vilify us like there's easy yeah. to create a narrative, whether whoever it is. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just I don't know. I just feel like Kobe was the one that I never would have even imagined that people right. would try to bring this up. Yeah, I just I, you know, I'm a person of faith and the Bible says he without he is who is without sin cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. So and it also says judge not lest ye be judged. So in my life, I, I try to model the love of Christ instead of the judgment that's not for me to decide who's going to hell. Mm -hmm. It's not for me to decide who's missed the mark because I got enough stuff that I need to work on for me, right? And mm. that's the Bible also says, get the plank out of your eye before you fiddle with, some, fiddle with someone's, uh, someone's splinter, which, like means, which means that if I have a plank, y'all know how big a plank of wood is? Mm -hmm. So God is telling you, you got a lot. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you over here messing with a splinter, which is like tiny? Right. Deal with the plank, dude. Like yeah. I just don't have time to worry about what you are doing in your life that doesn't measure up to what we're supposed to be. I gotta work on me. Yeah, I also think that part of the reason why there was such an onslaught mm -hmm. of vitriolic hatred and yeah. death threats uh, directed towards Gail is because of her association to Oprah right mm. now yeah. and the reputation that Oprah is <clears throat> getting for, you know, quote unquote, taking down black men and their mm -hmm. legacies, the, the MJ documentary and then the Russell Simmons documentary and et cetera, et cetera. So I think that that kind of it didn't help her, her association mm -hmm. to, to Oprah. Usually an association to Oprah is a good thing. Yeah. But No, but I think it's I think it's her association with being a black woman. Yeah. Because there's been white men out here, the guy Ari who works with Joe Rogan. Who is ho who almost slandered homeless Kobe. Now. Yeah. But I mean he slandered Kobe. Yeah. There's the, the Really the, badly. The yes. journalist really. from the Washington Post. Yeah. The other journal the one who said reported the LA niggers on M MSNBC. They both still have their but jobs. No, but but yeah. what I was amazed at when I saw the Snoop thing was mm -hmm. how easy it was for him to come for Gail that way mm -hmm. and for and for our people to just pile it on Gail mm -hmm. who's had a pretty stellar record up yeah. until that time we loved her when she but, was talking but, about but, talking but to R. Kelly where yeah. was all the energy for white folks that right. was the part yeah. I didn't understand yeah. mm -hmm. so as a black woman in you know in these rooms because you're in rooms a lot of the projects you've worked in I mean you've been on drink you've worked with Beyonce you've been in things that are considered mainstream mm -hmm. do you when you walk in a room do you feel or have you ever felt like you don't belong there? Not from your side, but from their side. You know, uh, no. You know why? I, I, I have a boldness about me because I, I'm already so far beyond what I thought I would ever do in this industry. Like, mm -hmm. I moved here to do one commercial and one sitcom. Mm -hmm. I was like, if I do that, I'm balling. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So anytime I, I did anything that was beyond those two things, mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm in the gravy. This is the, the icing on the cake place. Mm -hmm. So I already know God is doing the miraculous. So if he is doing the miraculous in my life, why would I ever walk 
into a room and be and shrink in a corner. Mm-hmm. You know, I have no control over how other people perceive me. I have no control over what their agenda is. But I firmly believe that I'm here for a purpose and there's a call in my life. So every door I walk in is to do something, mm-hmm. to fulfill something. And I'm just going to do it until God says no more. But it won't be man that says no but more. But where does that come from? Though? But that doesn't come from the streets of Ohio. It comes from my mom. It comes from faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I just feel like. Or being a Leo. Maybe be a really Leo. Feel like Leo's have you feel that. that way? Yeah. I feel this is the thing, and you guys tell me if I'm wrong. You guys wrong. are fearless. Don't you no. feel like, or if you're, don't you feel like you were put here for a purpose? Yes. Mm-hmm. Isn't there something Absolutely. that only you can do? Right. Yeah. It, some people never discover it. Some people it had they discover it a little bit later yeah. on. And for for me, after my car accident, that was when I got closer to understanding yeah. what it was. But it, it, some people just know it right off the bat. I know what I am born yeah. here to do mm-hmm. and other people, it, it, they struggle with it. But you know what it. trips people up? I think people think calling is vocation and it's not. Mm, your calling yeah. is not your job. Yeah. You might be good at all of this. Yeah, Everything yeah. you do, you might be good at, but that is not necessarily your call. When I got in here, the first thing I said is, I, I, I encourage and cheerlead people. Yes. I am a celebrator of people. Mm-hmm. I did that as an office temp. I did that working at Toys R Us over Christmas. Mm-hmm. I do that on every set. I did that walking in here. My call is to celebrate and encourage and support people. Mm-hmm. So God will place me where I need to celebrate, encourage, and support. Mm-hmm. So once you figure out what that is mm-hmm. and you're in your space of what you're supposed to do, what, what is there to fear? <laughs> right. I'm so, here to do this and, exactly. and they, everybody needs it. So right. I'm supposed to be here to do that. So yeah, I'm so, going through yeah. this whole transitional <laughs> period. I was going to bring a book today too. I'm going to get you one of yeah. my books. I just came out with a book called I heard about God Must Have Forgotten About Me. Yeah. And it's crazy that in writing the book, I've discovered, well, I always knew my purpose wasn't, I mean, Hollywood Unlocked is a part of the purpose because yeah. it's the platform of building an audience. But the book now has me in this weird place of now I found what my purpose is. Mm-hmm. And the book that's reaching people, I'm finding it, it from, they're helping me find my purpose, yeah. I guess my point. Um, wh- when you got into this business or when you came <clears throat> here to do the one commercial and, and the one sitcom, did you know what your purpose was coming here? Mm. Yeah, I've always known that I was an encourager and a supporter. Okay. Like I was, if you talk to any of my friends in high school, I was always the one like, what do you do? Oh my God. Like I was just very bubbly. So ex- yeah, just yeah. excited. Mm-hmm. I, I, I find people to be delicious, even in their mess. <laughs> I think that there's just a crumb of lusciousness in every person I love that. and it's up to you to find it. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to, to dig through some of it sometimes, but you find that one good thing that's special about about them and you mm-hmm. celebrate that and you encourage that so they'll do more of that instead yeah. of but beating down. how do you down. keep that light in this industry though? Because you know it ain't like that. I'm, it, where I am it is. Really? Everywhere I go. <laughs> really? Yeah. She you know, brings the light with maybe, her. Maybe it's because you illuminate the room, right? Uh, well, I would love to be considered that. That'd be great. Well, it would have to be because I mean like everybody's, I mean I've, I've not found that in our community mm-hmm. that we support each other the way that you're talking and, and emulating it It just it takes today. one or two to do it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? This interview might change someone's mind and go, why am I being so hateful? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can celebrate Sally. You know what I mean? Like it might change. <laughs> so Sally, 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 some little old Sally. Sally, little love. So it might change some mindsets, but it's like you have to do what you know to do in the spirit that you have. And I believe in using every platform I have for good. Mm-hmm. I am never going to waste a chance to talk about God, to talk about kindness. I'm never going to miss an opportunity to do that. Now you use your platform <clears throat> Twitter one time to go after Isaiah Washington. Did I go after him or did I did I take up for myself when he came for me? Mm-hmm. Which one? Break it down. What, who what came for? Do you feel like you defended yourself? <clears throat> ding, ding, ding. Yeah, I do think I defended myself. Mm-hmm. I do. I think. I think I did. Now, this is the thing. I'm from East Cleveland. And I got, you know, my mouth got hands. So, <laughs> I mean, oh I tell God. people all I'm the time, in, take it. But I tell everybody, don't come for me. I don't come for anybody. I'm right. really a lovely person. But if you bring the, fee- the heat, we gon- you know, it's going to happen. But, okay, so break Shut it down. The for fire. the people that don't know what yeah. we're talking about. Um, so he, he, he had a, he got a job or he landed a show on Fox Yes, and then you commented about it. Basically you said you saw it coming. Yeah. Basically said, and this is the, this is what we can talk about it lightly, but I don't take black voter disenfranchisement lightly at all. I feel that the only way we are going to steer this ship and change what's happening is if we all show up and vote. Mm-hmm. And so there's a, a faction of black people and I, it's in quotes, um, <clears throat> who are pushing this don't vote or vote for Trump, or mm-hmm. all Democrats are the same, all of this mess. Mm-hmm. At, and nowhere in that, even if you hate who's in office, nowhere in that do they say, why don't you run for something? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, if you don't like what's happening in the world, why, find why, some, the why don't you be the change? If, if they were coming from that space, I'd be like, okay, I, a little bit. But when it comes from these people are not for us, so let's take our ball and go home. And I know that there's some people that won't do the research and will just take their ball and go home, mm-hmm. and then we'll be stuck with the same mess we have for even longer. It frustrates me, and he falls into that. Mm -hmm. So I was speaking to the black voter disenfranchisement. I have nothing against the dude as an actor. Actually, even in the middle of the back and forth, I said he's an amazing actor, Mm -hmm. and I wish that he would 
stop doing this mess. Like, stop, <laughs> stop hurting us, you know? Yeah. So that's where it came from. But then when he thought he was funnier than me or wittier than me, he found out quickly that he's Ooh. not. No, he, so then, we can do that all no, day. Then, then he clapped back. Yeah, weak, though. His clapbacks were so weak. I really felt bad for him. I did. Were you ready for it? Were you like, let's I'm go? I'm always ready. I'm built for rebuttal, brother. I'm always I'm ready. Built and for where does that that's a shirt from? right there. I'm built no, for you rebuttal. Know, you know who told me that? It's actually, I, I do want to make shirts, but I got to give credit to Tank. We were doing um, New Edition movie, mm -hmm. and we got into this big back and forth. We used to always have back and forth conversations about who's better, mm -hmm. uh, Joe to see or Boys to Men or whatever. And so I was caping for Boys to Men because I'm East Coast family, and mm -hmm. that's my, my crew. And so we went back and forth. By the time we were done, the entire crew, all everybody was like 200 people while me and Tank are going back and forth. And he thought that I would give up at some point. Mm -hmm. He's like, you are built for rebuttal. I'm like, there it is. <laughs> There's the motto. Print that so, shirt. yeah, I'm telling you, it's a great shirt. So you called him a coon. I didn't call him a coon. Or he called you a coon. He called himself a coon. <laughs> <laughs> he self-identified. He self-identified. I have nothing to do with that. I, I didn't call him a coon. <laughs> so where do I you, think he was sensitive. Where are you guys now? Everything's cool. I don't, I don't know Isaiah. I didn't know him then. I don't know him now. I okay. have no desire to have any conversation. He wanted. To, he said something like he tried to DM me or he went, I don't, I don't want to talk to that dude. I, I stay on the light side of the road. But if, if something needs to be said for my people, I'm going to say it for my people. It was never personal against him. It was just, can you please stop trying to keep my people from doing what people have died to be able to do and that's folks. So mm -hmm. I'm going to always stand up for that. Yeah. So wait, so where do you be out here in LA? Cause I'm surprised. You At my house. You don't go out? No, I'm, I'm an introvert. Really? Yeah. I don't really, I'm not really out. I, an scene. extroverted introvert. You're not no, giving I'm me an introvert. That's all right always now. is. Remember this, an introvert is I've someone I've never that, met a Leo that's an introvert. An intro, introvert is someone who recharges by themselves. So I'll come and I'll do this and then I'll go home and be in the bed but for like five hours. Jason's an introvert. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like, you I, get well, it though. I've, no, I've, I've become that. Yeah. Oh, well, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, the new Jason I know. I'm tired of being in these streets. <laughs> Let me ask you this: <laughs> if you, rolling if up you on go, me on trains. if you go to a party mm -hmm. and you're there all night, how do you I feel the next day? Night. How do you feel the next day? If emotionally exhausted. There you go. That's yeah. an introvert. That's yeah. the simple definition. So I'm an introvert that likes people. A night out for me feels like I'm recovering from surgery. Or there you something go. Yeah, like I, I just can't do it. Yeah. And as I get older, I don't want to do it, yeah. so I don't do it. Yeah, but you're still young. I'm relatively. I was telling Jason how excited I was about you coming on uh, the show because I I became I first. No, you said you were gonna fan out. I'm I'm kind of I'm trying uh -huh. to I'm trying to control it. Oh, okay, honey. I became um, familiar with who you were from you know commercials. Yeah, it just seemed like every time you turned around, mm -hmm. you were at a commercial, yeah. and I was like, that money. I was like, who is this adorable oh, black woman? Like my I, my I think it was like a pine saw commercial yeah. was like my favorite one. Oh, thank you. And then when I saw you, you ain't um, never used no pine saw. And that one I, ran. I, I used that pine commercial. saw, motherfucker. I got wooden never, floors in my apartment. Your house by yourself. <laughs> I I d I can't afford a maid Melissa, right I now. I never see you cleaning your house I, it's how i think really it's how i, I think i definitely believe melissa cleans yeah, I'm, listen i'm domestic okay, I'm, 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 well, get some domestic now you got to get clorox wipes now i have clorox okay. wipes listen we are getting off topic okay so you know i'm always excited about seeing um an actress or an actor mm -hmm. That comes from you know the world of commercials, mm -hmm. and then they're recognized for having more talent than just you know a 30, 40 second minute yeah. spot or second uh, a thirty second spot. And then I see you were booked for Community, mm -hmm. you know, and I love that show. Thank I you love... for watching. I didn't know black women watch that show. Well, I'm She's half not white. A black woman. There we go. Okay, <laughs> okay, there we go. Thank you. But so. you want to know why I like yeah. it is Let's because it down. I'm, listen, I'm not only half black, half white. I'm also Canadian, so I have a oh, very a different. Sense yeah, of humor. yeah, I have a very yeah. dry, droll sense of yeah. humor. So like Ryan Reynolds is like a god to us. Got it. You know, and yeah. so, and I love Amy Poehler. Yeah. So it really appealed to my um, my sense of humor, and yeah. I just I adored you on oh, the show. I was I was cheering for you in my head Thank you. you know so i was really excited about that show but i also have to ask you about something yes. something it's rumored <clears throat> that you dated uh zachary zachary uh levi wow hey. you guys did a deep dive yeah we did um he's that? hot as hell he's hot as hell he's so fine he's hot as hell wait is he what well, yeah, i never google, been on google, google, he's, 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 he's in the movie shazam oh, jason won't know nothing about that he don't watch shit but he's um cute. he's Really, are you still friends? We are still friends. Hey. Okay. Yes. Okay. That's well, we're going to be friends now, so I can't date your ex, but <laughs> he's he, fine. Is, is he white? Yes. He's white. I never said I dated him. I said I never said that. No, okay. but that's what the people said. You said y'all friends. That's what the people said. That's what the people said. That's, that's, that's what the T said. on this sheet said. <laughs> a couple of pictures. Just a couple of pictures. People just read into stuff. Oh, well, girl, if you didn't yeah. date him, you should have dated him. He's still single. You never know. Wait, you didn't say you didn't date him. Huh? You didn't say you didn't date him. I did not. 
And you didn't say you dated. No, I didn't say I dated. So you didn't confirm nor deny. I did not confirm. <laughs> they okay. just doing that thing in between. <laughs> you got a little thing in between you do. Okay, wait. So so you're open to the swirl, the whole bra- you interracial. You know what's funny? I, um, the swirl. No. You're I actually not. love my brothers. I love my brothers. Okay, so listen, can I ask Wait, you? wait, wait. I got to wait. Let me dig a little bit here. Okay. Hold on. I was going to dig. So you're so you you prefer but do you date white men or have you would you date a white man? I I I think that I'm a little too militant to do that. I Me- think militant? No, militant. 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 Oh, really? Militant. Yeah. So you're yeah, like yeah, pro black. Oh, I'm very pro black. Okay. And I'm not that doesn't mean I'm anti anything else. Yeah. I just, you know, I love my brothers. Okay, so here's a question for yes. you. Yes. So, uh I have a I have another podcast mm-hmm. called I'm Here for the Food. It's very yes. women-centric and you're coming on it. Yes, I will. Um you have to come on it. And so we just had a conversation about race loyalty. Okay. You know, when it comes to dating yeah. and how black women are extraordinarily race loyal. Yeah. That's right. But That's right. That's right. But statistically you know, the ratio is just not in our favor. I know it's, it's not. just not mass incarceration. Know. Uh, you know, like, just the availability of our black counterparts, our yeah. black male counterparts. They're just not available to us. It's like 30 to one. Yeah. You know what I mean? Women wait, to wait, men. Wait, 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 what? what? No, that is true. No, it it's is, no, true. It's bad. It's bad. Wait, that, wait, 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 wait. That black men are not available to black women. It's not. No, in terms of availability, there's a the scarcity. Race, the race, the ratio, the ratio. Like, there's for every a scarcity. Woman, there's like for every black man, available black there's man, 30 women. there's thirty women. Oh. So it's like shooting a fish in a fucking barrel for them. Is it? Is yeah. it really? It's lovely on this side. But why though? Shut up. Why is it? Why is it that? Well, there's several reasons. Mass incarceration. That's there's one. so many of our black and, br- and brown brothers in in jail. Mm-hmm. Um, homosexual. We're never going to date. You know what I'm saying? So there's that. So <laughs> for you every- never know. <laughs> you, wait, we're homosexual or in prison now? No, I'm ta- I'm talking about the I'm talking. Who the fuck did this research? I'm talking about the factors in which a man is un- a black man is unavailable Available to, to a, a black, black woman. woman mm-hmm. You know, jail's and first. Ex- jail is huge. It's huge. And so being a woman who is very pro black and mm-hmm. wants to, you know, date black men. Like, how do you, and especially here in LA, girl. I know, and let me say this. I don't, I don't want to seem like I, first of all, there's not like a whole bunch of white dudes that be like, hey, you know, so it's not like I'm like <laughs> tossing them aside. Um, I just, I just, I just, in my mind, I just imagine me with a, with a brother and I would love that. Um, but I'm open to whatever God says. Okay. Now, I don't, I know the statistics are bad, but I know that the fact that I exist means that my counterpart has to exist. So I'm believing that he's out there. I don't know where the hell he is, but I believe he's out he there. He's on his so, way. Yeah. I don't know. I'm unsettled about this little percentage thing. I got. We got to do some research. It doesn't affect you. It doesn't affect you. No, I, I mean, you? I'm, no, I'm sure. Exactly. Yeah, but we all ain't gay and in prison. Yeah. We somewhere, there's white men. There's black men well, out there some, with white women. Yeah, that's, that's, part, no, that's part of it, too. That's part of it, Yvette, too. this motherfucker usually comes in here double-fisted, and I'm not talking about drinks. Yeah, but me having a nigga or two don't mean that when that's the reason why. When do I ever have? Me having a nigga or two or three or four on a good week does not mean that's the reason why black women don't have a black man. No, 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 no. You said the ratio. The ratio. I'm I'm saying that you (laughs) exist in a community where there is abundance. It's a plentiful. As a black black woman looking for her counterpart in a black man, say gainfully employed, attractive, disease free, disease has a free home. is big. Please, you know what? And these, and these are not major standards. No, it's not. These are the it's basics. The basics. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But we are meant to feel like you know. It's just it's a conversation that how we you, have frequently. How do you treat the bit. plentiful of the, the all the women that you have? I mean. You're, you're trying to find one, yes? Oh, yeah. You know, you okay. try to find one. Do you hear that? But aren't you the dating, octave are, just went up wait, in his aren't voice? Aren't you dating Evelyn Lozada, though? <laughs> oh, yeah. But wait, she's not considered black, though, right? Damn. Right. That's what I'm saying. You added to the stereotype. All right, let, let's get <laughs> off this. Right into the camera. <laughs> wait, so, so you, are, you are. I do not date Evelyn. <laughs> uh, allegedly. You know, once the blog say you do, I didn't say it's it. the truth, right? <laughs> it's true. It's true. All right, so you were it's on That's So Raven? I was. I did one episode. Wait, so you know Orlando Brown? I don't know him. I worked no. with him, but I don't know. You know, it was like, what, 17 years ago when I did that show? So I don't. Has it been he that was long? a baby. Then. Oh, so, okay. No, it's been a while. Long while. Yeah. Well, That's one you, of the first things I did. Have you seen some of his online antics? I have seen some of his online antics. You know, I text Nick Cannon. I said, hey, big head, after, you know, <laughs> uh, Nick hasn't responded. <laughs> I just think it's kind of so shady to bring somebody into your mess. You right. know what I mean? Like, dude, he's working it out. Like, do what you got to do, man, to work it out. But why are you just dragging people into your mess? I don't Wait, understand. Have you noticed it. Yvette got good teeth? You got do good, I good teeth. Yeah. Well, are, those, okay. are those your original teeth? She's a commercial. Those are your original teeth. Those are your original teeth. You can tell them I had a gap. You had braces. Oh, I, I okay. had a gap that if you saw me cross the street, you think I was missing a tooth. Really? <laughs> you could drive a truck through my gap. But there's kind of gaps are kind of sexy. Not mine. No? Mine was no, not mine. Gaps yeah. are a little yeah, sexy. I dated somebody with a gap. I thought it was hot. Yeah, mine wasn't. 
Damn. But as a kid, like, give me a little character. Who knows, who knows what I would have thought of it as I got older? But you know, when you were a kid. Wait, like, so when you were doing commercials, if you were doing commercials that everybody remembers, especially like Pine Salt, those yeah. are checks that keep coming, right? Big commercials. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen that commercial all the time. While, yeah. I want to say this too about commercials. Mm. Um, I, I don't think commercial actors get their due. No, they don't. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. At thir- 30 seconds, you have to create a character, tell a story, sell a product. 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. You have to do all of this. And be relatable. And be relatable. Mm-hmm. And that's 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 not a lot of runway to get it done. Yeah, so, I'm not going to be able to do that. So I really, you could. <laughs> so I just respect the the the... I respect it and I'm glad that I started there because that laid the groundwork for being able to be on any set that I'm yeah. on. Commercials are really awesome. Does it yeah. come to a point though in your career where now you've had all the success that you won't do a commercial? No, I would love to do a commercial. Listen. But I'll Residual say Residual money. But I'll say this. <laughs> because it is so lucrative and it is not based on your agent or how many credits you have, I leave that to the people entering because it's the way to keep the lights on and to feed yourself. And I think it's greedy. For, if I walk into a room to, to, for an audition, I'm going to book it at this point. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that means Ooh. someone that needs it is I, not. I love the confidence. No, yeah. but, you know, no yeah. but I mean, I don't but mean you, it like but that, but, but it's you've like, done teach so me your no, ways. because they want, they, at this point, they will want a face. Like, they don't even, know. Yeah, they won't even right, say, yeah. this is Yvette Nicole Brown. They'll just have me holding up Coca Cola. And the, it is, that's Yvette Nicole Brown holding Coca Cola. Yeah. I'm not thinking highly of myself. I just know how advertising works. Mm-hmm. So if it's me and, a new girl they're going to give it to me and then she deserves it mm-hmm. that's her shot that's her way to make her name so i think it's rude to go back and just grab it now an endorsement mm. now if somebody said yvette, yvette nicole brown for coca-cola yeah. call your girl <laughs> but i don't want to take the ones that are there for those that are starting out because it's really a great way to make money you also do voiceovers and that's another great yeah. way of doing voiceovers you have a I fantastic voice Thank you, sis. So do you. how did you like how did you develop like you know the voice do you have accents do you do I have a couple of accents mm-hmm. I, I don't know that they're great I have worked with them so maybe they took pity on me um give us an accent I, I will do it in a second I okay. want to say this first okay. Cree, Cree Summer who's amazing oh my god of, voiceover oh queen oh my god so yeah. one of the first things I did was Pound Puppies one, that was the first show I ever did mm-hmm. that was a long, right? long time ago mm-hmm. and so she played my my dog's puppy uh-huh. I adopted a puppy <laughs> and so I got to work with Cree Summer who I'd love since a different world mm-hmm. and she came in and I was so nervous it's like I can't you know do voiceover in front of the great Cree Summer mm-hmm. and she said something that blew my mind she said Yvette everything I do is my voice and I said I know she said no 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 it's my voice pitched up. Mm-hmm. It's my voice pitched down. Mm-hmm. It's my voice faster, slower, but it's always my voice. You have a voice. So get out of your head about it and stop thinking, I have to be this. No, you just have to use your voice. Pitch it up. Take so it down. So how do you become a voiceover? Because I can. they don't see you. <clears throat> no, they don't. So you could just be behind the behind the scenes. Your sweatpants. I would do that. Yeah. yeah. There's less. Is there less pressure doing that? It's, it's tedious. It's, it's, no, it's not. It's actually a lot of fun. But I will say this. Well, for me, I can't speak for you. But for oh, me, hey, look, I can't read. So. <laughs> it's it does require acting skills. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people think well, commercials. It's, it's copy. It's what you do. Mm-hmm. But if you're going to play a character on a show, you do need to know how to act. And I think people think that it's you just show up and no, you they can't see you. Mm-hmm. So if I'm talking, you're to you, still creating the yeah, character. And yeah. Also, if I raise an eyebrow and I'm talking to you and I raise an eyebrow, I furrow my brow. You can see that I'm upset. Mm-hmm. They can't see me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I have to put upset a lot of, in my voice. A lot of character. Voice. Exactly. Like so, one of my, who's one of my favorite voiceover actors? <gasps> Donald Sutherland. Oh, oh my, And, and then Kiefer. Great. Like I could yeah. like listen, to, yeah. listen to him like sing the fucking alpha. Um, yeah. What know, about the good. old dude that plays God all the time? What's Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. Yeah. Oh, he's one of the he's greatest man. voiceover he, actors right? ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Very recognizable. 100%. Okay, so give us something like, um, I don't know. Uh, t- what? What, what's the latest voiceover thing that you did? I mean, today, I actually did one today. It was silly. It was like a, I played a, a fish in a fishbowl and she was a mayor. <laughs> so she was really just excitable. It literally is literally just my voice. So yeah. it's not, there's no magic to it. Mm-hmm. It's you just, you see the, you see the drawing and you just decide what you think that what would sound like. What you think that sounds that like. That would sound like. And usually. A fish in a fishbowl who's the mayor? Yeah. That'd be an arrogant <laughs> ass fucking yes. fish. Yes. She was running things. So, yeah. you know, you just do an authoritative voice. Yeah. yeah. I was watching, one of my favorite movies, uh, animated films is Finding Nemo. Yes. Like, it's one of my favorites. It's a great film. Like, to the point where I watched the making of Finding <laughs> Nemo. I love it. You know, and one of the greatest voiceovers was like, just this one little line. Mm-hmm. It was when <laughs> Nemo was swimming out. And uh, they were talking about the voice of the person that was just like, Nemo swimming out to sea, but I can't do it <laughs> yeah. because they were lisping the yeah. whole time. Yeah. I just, I've always wanted to get into voiceovers and I never really felt like, you need, I, you like can, I could. You, you can do it. And this is the thing too. There's a couple of lanes like, mm-hmm. 
Cree was telling me that what I do is in her language. I would never say that, but she said it's just using your voice. Yeah. But then there are people that can say he's 47 years old. He has a, a nasal problem. He's from Minnesota, and his left foot hurts. Damn. And somebody could create <laughs> that sound yeah, of a Carey. voice. Not just not, no, not just not Jim Carrey. There's a lot of voiceover people yeah. mm-hmm. that are really skilled at mm-hmm. that. Um, so that lane is a, is completely different. Like yeah. I'm not in that stratosphere. But yeah. if you need just a black woman voice or a woman voice. I can do it. I did a demo one no, time where important. they I had a bunch of copy, and so mm-hmm. it was everything from a yo play to a granola to selling bleach yeah. to chocolate. And you know, I'm I guess I might be considered slightly seductive. Mm-hmm. And I thought the chocolate was going to be really really easy. Yeah. It was the hardest thing for me to well, do. Melissa, and gonna, I could sell the shit out of bleach. We're we gonna send you to a voiceover class so you can learn how to be a chocolate fish in Finding Nemo <laughs> Three. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Thanks. I okay. appreciate yeah. that. So, look, have you ever, <clears throat> what do you think about Kanye West becoming a pastor or having his little church? Are you, would, would you go to something That's like a big ass uh, church now? Uh, it's big. It is big. Um, I don't know. Like, I haven't, I haven't felt led to go so far. You know, um, I feel like we got, we got to find Jesus for ourselves and I know him. So, I don't, I don't think I need Kanye to show me who he is and where he is. I know where he is. He's in my heart. So, um, I actually don't feel led to, you know. Go. But do you want to go on Sunday? We can go. No, I'm good. You, you want people? I, no, you know, I don't we know can way. go to brunch on that day yeah, that he goes know. there. And it's, it's no shade. Like I, I, no. I, I just don't feel led to go. Like I haven't. I, I heard about it. and I was like, I want to go. I just didn't see when it. I originally went. I had. The Did you whole, go? I've, I've been a few What's times. What's it like? When I went the first time, Let's I was very it. much of. I have my relationship with God. Mm-hmm. No matter what the experience is in this room, I'm going to. I'm not going to allow myself to get caught up in anything that I may think this is. Right. But I, I, I'm drawn to gospel music. Okay. So I do love gospel music. They, the, the music is amazing. Amazing okay. choir. But I'm, yeah. but I'm very clear. If I'm with my friends and they get to doing all of this, uh, you better put your hands down. Because why? Then explain that to me. Because I don't know what we're worshiping. I, what we're worshiping. You know, and I think about now, Jim Jones. Now, now, I, think I, must, about Jim now Jones. I must say to you, Jason, if yeah. that is the case, why are you there? The music. I love music. I love gospel music. There's a lot of places to enjoy gospel no, music. If you have a, if you have a real concern that what you're worshiping is not Jesus, and you may not. Need no, to be it's there. not that I don't think they're not worshiping Jesus there because it has evolved now to where they've what they've done is. Kanye comes in with the music, mm-hmm. and then they have like real pastors, like a, ser- a service, ser- real okay. service. So okay. they have they. The, I went to like the first one. Okay. Then I went to like a couple of mm-hmm. later. So it's been evolving mm-hmm. into a real thing. I think they're figuring it out. Uh, I'm not gonna say I'm a member or a, 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 you sound a congregant. Like a, you sound like a congregant. Mm. The music is amazing, though. I bet it is. is I have a friend that sings in the choir. I I I I don't doubt that uh, the music is amazing. I mean, mm-hmm. Kanye's an amazing musician, so of course the music's gonna be amazing. Um, I just don't. I just don't. I need to know what what the spirit is in any room I'm going in, mm-hmm. and and I need to be equipped to counterbalance whatever <laughs> it is if it's not him. Yeah. And so that's a lot of people in there, and I don't know that I have enough in me to have you been. <laughs> have, 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 have you been if it's it, not, it might be God. I just don't know. Have you been to Warren and Erica Campbell's church? I'm not. Oh, they're not, that's, no, that's good. Oh, yeah. You, you walk in there, the spirit hits you at the yeah, door. Yeah, like that's. I kind of. I kind of want him to greet me. And it's at a. <laughs> and, hey, and, 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 and the church. There you go. <laughs> It's called yeah. the California Worship Center, yeah. and it's at a school. Okay, that's the crazy part. Like church is wherever you are. Church is church is here. Two or three people yeah, gathered. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have a church right now. Wait, so are you single now? I am. Are you dating? You know what? I think I am. I know. <laughs> Listen, what I know. You no, think? I know. It's LA. I know what you mean. It's LA. I, I think, think I'm I am. dating. I think what I'm dating. What does that even mean? That no, means I don't get that. that means that the, well, because of the ratio she talked about, there's a guy <laughs> I like that I've been to certain events with, and I think he likes me back. I don't know. I think I'm dating him. I, I mean, don't know. Have you know. guys Netflix and chilled yet? Um, that doesn't mean shit. That really doesn't. Did you ask shit. him if, if you're dating him? I haven't asked him. It was early. I don't know. I don't know. You understand what I'm saying, I hate though. how ambiguous shit is. It's so I ambiguous. But that's, why you, that, but that's why I catch all the heat when I be like, yo, you want to fuck? Like, just get straight to the you point. You can do your that, though. You know, can do God. that. Yeah, and your no. community's different. That's different. No, we can't do that. <sighs> your Penetration is first different. base. That's what he always Wait, said. So you don't have any kids yet? No kids. Do you want kids? You know, I'm kind of too old, I think, to even think about that. No, you're I'm, not. Listen, I'm not trying to be chasing no time. Wait, how old are you? You're 46? I don't. How dare you? <laughs> but you're, no, but you're a young. You're, you're, you just I'm, numbers, I'm 42. Just random She's numbers. 43. Oh, you're, you're, but we're young. We're still young. I am young, but this is the th- youngish. But the thing skin is. Skin is flawless. Skin. Teeth is great. Thanks, brother. Hair is just Thank you. sitting. Thank you. Hair sitting. Sweater. <laughs> sweater is phenomenal. Sweater is amazing. <laughs> um, you know what? I, I think about 
what the what the world is like now. Seriously, this is real talk. What the world is like now, like I don't even know if a baby I would have yeah, would have true. air to breathe. Yeah. Or so we have a lot in common. You, as a woman, you have to think about those kinds yeah. of things. Like what kind of earth are we, are we leaving, leaving to I be inherited by as, our children? I think about that as a man. Yeah, but as a woman who wait, we create progeny. It comes out of our bodies type thing. Came out of mine first. Listen. I Talk, know what you mean. You know. You know. Okay, you know, wait. Yeah. You know who you look like? Who do I look like? Melinda Williams. Do I? Has anybody ever told you I've that? I've never heard Melinda Williams. Yes. Mm, a really? little bit. Yes. Ish. Yes. In favor. We I love her. She's gorgeous. Love her. She's really pretty. Yeah, Very but beautiful. I guess in um, favor. I've gotten Jill Scott before. Okay. I I Jilly from I Philly. Could, yeah. You have a much yeah, a better bit. personality, though. Oh, don't do oh, that. Oh, you, you know her? I, I've met her. The oh, queen, Jilly. Okay. She seemed nice. Yeah. Uh, long walk. Oh, <laughs> I love God. you, Jill. No, I love her too. Jill. I love her too. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. What'd you, so, what'd you think of the Oscars this year? Because they were being accused of being Oscars so white all over again. Yeah. However, the short animated film that won yes, was Matthew was Cherry. exactly we was Hair college. Love. Went to the same college, okay. University of Akron. Hey. Shout it out. Okay, that's yeah. dope. Um, I thought it, it was a really, really, really adorable film, and yeah. I I know you know yeah. that we can understand yeah, we've it. Been through that. Um, but what did you think about you know just like it just seems like they went out of their way. They did. Some, you know, I, I, I kind of got schooled a little bit about this because I was, I thought Janelle's opening was amazing. I thought that it was so gangster the way she did it, um, and I loved Ugh. that they had, you know, trappings of us throughout. But yeah. then mm-hmm. someone said to me, "Yeah, they used us as the hired help." Yes, yes. We were the performance. Yeah, we were dancing right. yeah. Yes. And I, when someone said that on Twitter, because I was like, "Oh, it's so great. We, we, I see us." Yeah. And they were like, "Yeah, you see us, like basically serving and the entertaining." Well, my, my friend, yeah. did, my friend Matthew did win an Oscar for Matthew Terry. Yeah, for uh, Justin, our for hair, friend for hair our love, friend. for hair love. But I remember him from Tiny Chat days. We used I to play on like Twitter. I yeah, I mean, he he did win. I mean, but yeah, it's. I mean, but we know what it is. We know what it is. That's the thing. Uh, somebody asked me on one of the red carpets. I, I think it was a couple of places before the Oscars. And we're like, what do you think about Oscars so white? I'm like, that's just what it is. Like, yeah. I don't know what. That's why we got the Image Awards. Like, I'm overjoyed that we have that. So it's a way for us to go, good job. I see you. Yeah. You know, it's important. And yeah. I love that. That award show, people show up for the Image Awards. Which oh, I'm yeah. Really well, like, they have, me and Image Awards are not on good What's standard. going on with you? What's talking well, about? They invited us to come into their awards nomination brunch and gave us a carte blanche to interview everybody then the awards they wanted to put us in a shack because there was no room on the carpet because they got all this white press on there you know they hired sunshine and sacks and slate pr i've been very critical Mm. uh anywhere i speak about because that now that show that's our show that's our people Mm -hmm. why would we not have access to our people so i've been very vocal about that and i know you've was that this year or last year last year okay Mm -hmm. i haven't even tried this year because i'm like you know what can you please try because we need you on the carpet well i well if you know somebody over there uh i don't know nobody that's the problem (laughs) (laughs) i'm sure we know a couple of not but even like tasha who used to run pr for tv one is gone now like she left so mm-hmm. we'll figure it out. But um, but you do know, like I know we, you talk about this a lot. It is so important for me anyway. The end of the carpet is my reward mm-hmm. for the beginning of the mm-hmm. carpet. Mm-hmm. You know, when I get down to the back with the end with people with their recorders and the per- there's people down there working the camera and the lights. Mm-hmm. Yeah, smaller press outlets. Yeah, man, yeah. I yeah. am in love with that. Yeah. And, I, and it is important for me to get down there to them. And it's important for us to be there. Mm-hmm. So whatever is happening that where they're trying to keep you out. I hope that you'll keep fighting to be there because we need you there. No, I'm glad you beat me to that. I was going to talk about Cynthia Revo at the uh, <coughs> Oscars. I was pissed. And how she what was happened? walking by. But hold on. But no, you said something I have to correct you really quick. Mm-hmm. At the end of the carpet, it's not the smaller platforms. Yeah. It's black people. You, it's the black, the black people. Pa- yeah. no, no, but it's not smaller. I think that's the that's the thing that some talent thinks yeah. on the carpet. No, no, yeah. no. The only because she was talking about the recorders and wearing all the yeah, hats but, but and I mean, stuff but like there, that. But there's people with recorders from mm-hmm. NPR. There's people mm-hmm. with recorders from Vanity Fair. That's true. There's people Absolutely. Right. Recorders. But, but, but I just meant to mention it because that's they're working it out. They're making yes. it work for themselves. Well, I will quick. tell you, like this year, you know, with the Grammys, yeah. last year we were shut out. And yeah. this year I took a stand. I'm joining the Grammy board. But I've been trying to get in places internally to, to have mm-hmm. the conversation inside. Because when you're outside yelling, that's just like awareness. So yeah, me talking right. about it is awareness. But I do want to get in and help. I will say that uh, Cynthia making she her people stop her, and go. Yeah, yeah, forced her PR to stop on the red carpet to Good. talk to a black journalist. Good. Now that was yeah. like, I, I I won't say I've never, I haven't seen Harriet. I'm not, I, I, saw don't, it. I don't know her work. I but, love her but work. I, mm-hmm. But I don't know it. But I'm, I'm saying is my point. I don't know her. I yeah. don't know her yeah. work, mm-hmm. but I have an utmost respect for her now mm-hmm. because it takes a lot of courage, especially at that event mm-hmm. to be able to say to your people, now nah, we about to go over here and talk to my yeah, people. Yeah, but you know what too? I don't know that it takes 
courage if you actually love your people. Mm. You know what I mean? And I think she loves her people. Mm -hmm. So it's not, they work, publishers work for you. Mm -hmm. Like they're there. Absolutely. They're there to facilitate your walk down that carpet. If you say, I don't want to talk to, not that you would, I don't want to talk to Entertainment Weekly, they will move you right past Entertainment Weekly and take you to Hollywood Unlocked. That's, That's just the way it works. I think sometimes people... Some people maybe just entering or who become famous too fast don't realize the power that they mm-hmm. have. And we have to make sure we stop and talk to black press. And there were some people criticizing her because she had said, no, I have to talk. I have to talk as if she was asking for permission mm-hmm. when she's the person she's in the control. Boss. She's the boss. Yeah. Well, yeah. she's she was receiving a lot of criticism anyways for being, you know, a uh, British actress who was, uh, you know, casted for Harriet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she was she didn't take well to the criticism. Mm-hmm. And I just want to challenge everybody who criticized her. Watch the fucking movie. Mm-hmm. She is an accomplished actress. She blew the roof mm-hmm. off of the uh, the Kodak Theater singing. singing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I love Elton John, but sorry, she <laughs> should have won that dress, girl. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, I was, was I was, was fangirling out was for her. Fierce. And by the way, I don't know if you're watching it, The Outsider on HBO right now. Amazing. That's, oh. that's her. That's her. Amazing. Is Cynthia Arriva's in it. Uh, she's playing That's this character show. called I Holly. Seen it. Holly, Holly Lightly. Or, I you know not to I, ask me. Okay, I can't watch remember the show. Did you like? Why are you looking over here? Stephen King. It's amazing. You got to watch it. But watch I'm, I, 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 I'm obsessed with her. Yeah. But yeah. what you just said, I think, defines. I hope the message that every because I, I'm not against uh, black celebrities. I think it's easy for our people to de- be. I, I think it's easy for both our people to demonize black journalists or for platforms like Hollywood Unlocked to be demonized because it's not, you know, a Vanity Fair or it's not, you know, I don't know what they think it is, uh, entertainment tonight. We are all doing the same work. And you're breaking stuff too. It's you're the breaking, same thing. breaking a lot of stuff. But and we're talking about our people more than the Hollywood reporters or more like we're talking about them mm-hmm. every day. And, and you can get like what is this? We we bought on a, a minute thirty here talking. We could talk for another two hours. Y'all yeah. will let me come and <laughs> and pitch my stuff and yeah. talk about what and talked about Jesus up in here. Don't <laughs> yeah. let me just do what I want. That is what it is. It's right. like it feels like a family conversation mm-hmm. and not like this timed thing where well, you know you gotta make sure you pitch this and make sure you plug that. It's not like that when yeah. you with your people. Yeah. But could you imagine if none of us ever showed up? Like if like if all of us as a collective is black people, journalists and talent. Black mm-hmm. people would have no press. The only people having press would be the A-listers and the rest of us that are trying to make it wouldn't have anyone that would mm-hmm. listen to us. Mm-hmm. Because the other thing that, that I think people don't realize is when you're walking down the carpet, everybody don't want to talk to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hello? Mm-hmm. So as you're going down, you know, you'll see Entertainment Weekly and as you walk by, they might turn their head mm-hmm. to let you know there's you're not I don't have nothing to say or to you. Or they'll be talking to you and then somebody like a Beyonce and hit they the carpet will push and it's you over. Right yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So you got to understand that you're always building. Like when I first did uh, the red carpet and the photographers, I was thinking to myself, these people are in the hot sun. Most of them are, they're not, they don't have water. They're, they're bum, 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 from the time the carpet starts to the end, they are killing themselves. And these people get on the carpet. They don't acknowledge them. Mm-hmm. They don't say thank you. Mm-hmm. They just show their dress and move on. And these poor people are sitting there all, all day. So I thought when I get on the carpet, I'm going to say, hey, John, hey, Mary. <laughs> so I now am like 10, 15 years in on camera and on shows. I know them now. Mm-hmm. I will pause in the middle to go give somebody a hug while mm-hmm. I'm taking pictures. It's We're working. Mm-hmm. Everybody there has a job to do. All of us are building this entertainment machine. Mm-hmm. Acknowledge your crew right. and the people that are there working with you to make you look good. And right. why you will be rude to somebody taking your picture, right. I do not understand. I don't get it either. Because Getty is forever. Yeah. Listen. They decide Listen. what ends up on yeah. Getty. Yeah. Once it's up, it ain't do never going ain't away. Do you ain't never going away. And this is what I said to myself. I said, now what we do, we have two purposes on the red carpet. We're going to yeah. do our interviews, yeah. but we're going to film who don't come and do an interview. Uh. And we're, we're going to put it all out. So, so uh, you look for that blue microphone. Yeah. All right, so what, what are you working on now? I'm so happy I get to pitch because you guys, I want to tell you that I fought to be here today. I don't know if Lissa told you, but I'm on a great show on Disney Plus called the Big uh, called Big Shot, mm-hmm. and it stars John Stamos. And I play he plays a an elite basketball coach at a kid's mm-hmm. uh, a girl's high school, and I'm like the principal or the head mm-hmm. mistress over the mm-hmm. school. So uh, it's a we shoot eight day episodes, and my character wasn't in this episode a lot, so mm-hmm. I only worked one day. So I had like seven days, like yay, fun time, mm-hmm. work in LA. Yeah. And so I scheduled this knowing that I was off this day, not knowing that they were going to say, hey, we got to table read today. So they called and said, today? yeah, guess what time? When? One thirty. Mm. And where was I supposed to be at one thirty? Here. So I called. I was like, you guys, I'm going to Hollywood Unlocked. I can't cancel because if I cancel, they're going to think I don't love them and they're my people. No. I no, literally, no, I called no, Alyssa. No, ask Alyssa. No, Aly- I, Alyssa, <laughs> no, what Aly- Alyssa did call me, which I, I, I've never met you. Yeah. I'm like, damn, I liked you before you even got here. Uh, she called and she said she wants to be there when all three of you are there. Yeah, I wanted to. 
to have the experience. Yeah. And we're gonna do no, it. I, Let's I appreciate do it. that. And it's hard to get you too. And so she was like, "Well, he'll be here, but then maybe the 26th." I'm like, "Well, I'm not going. I don't know what's going to happen on the 26th." <laughs> so I told my job. I said, "You guys, listen. You have got to let me go do this interview." I'm like, "I want to plug Disney Plus. Mm-hmm. I want to plug Big Shot. I want to celebrate my people. You got to let me." And so thankfully. They let me come. Hey. I'm supposed to be at a table read. Wait, right are they now. still doing the table read? They're right? at a table read right now. Without you? Without me. Oh, shit. Without me. How many minutes in are we already? <laughs> it's too late. I can't make it. Oh, you can't even make I it? I can't make it. But I, but I told them, I said, thank you for letting me come. I'm going to make sure I talk about Big Shot. So it's called Big Shot. It's oh, on yeah. Disney+. Plus. No yes. plus John Stamos. And then I also have a game show, on a kid's game show called The Big Fib. On Disney, so big apparently is how I get into. So did you do like an overall duh at Disney? No, it just so happened that I did Lady and the Tramp, and through doing Lady and the Tramp, I met a lot of the the people over there, and then they asked me to host the D twenty three announcement of D- Disney Plus, which is crazy. Mm-hmm. This black chick up there going, "Hey guys, here's Marvel." You're gonna become the auntie now on Blackish. It's I, coming. I will do it. In a <laughs> I mean, it's all in the same I love lot. It. I would love it. Yeah. So I had, I'm having a good time over there, and Disney is great, and Disney Plus is great. So yeah. And they pay good. They pay very well. <laughs> they do. They, they, they do. better. Yeah, they yeah. do. Yeah. They do. They take care of you. Yeah. Do you do you have any um, plans of you know writing, directing, producing? Well, I did write a movie that's nominated for NAACP Image Award. Hey, right? really? Hey, this you year? know that this year? Wait, does. this year? Yes, I wrote a film called Always a Bridesmaid, and oh, it that's is right. I was yes. going to ask you about yes. that. Wait, so, you wrote the whole thing? I wrote the whole thing by yourself. By myself. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote the whole thing. But, but you don't want to direct it. You know, I didn't direct it. We had a great director, Trey Haley. He's with Tri Destin Productions. I know Trey. You know Trey? Yeah, yeah I know Trey. Boy. So Trey directed it. And Nakaya, Indy over there. Oh. So they're the production company behind it. And then, you know, we le- it was on BET in September, and now we're on DVD. You should rent it. Okay. You should buy it or rent it or stream it or something. Well, I can get it somehow. Will you get it? I can find it. Yeah. I'm going to find it. I where can we stream it? You can stream it. Um, it's on Amazon Prime. Okay. I can watch yeah, it. I got it. Yeah, I got it. Amazon I got Prime. It. It's also Target.com, Walmart, Best Buy. All of those places have it. So. I got an Amazon Prime yeah, account. Yeah, I'm nominated. I'm going to do it. So you're going. Of course I'm going. Damn, I need to figure out how to go. <laughs> can you go, please, so I can talk can to you? Can we ask Rachel? Are you going to be go? here? It's on the 22nd. Oh, yeah, I won't oh, be here. Oh, you won't be here? Yeah. No, I'm going to be in London. Okay. Hanging out I'll with Christian it. Louboutin. No, that's... Oh, my God. That's on Don't the, even ask him for a pair believe. of shoes because Excuse I fucking me. asked him and he hasn't me. done shit Excuse for me. me. That's on the 24th. I'll be in London doing other stuff. See, that's this is Paris. why you don't see me anywhere because you're one of the cool kids. I'm not one of the cool kids. We can hang out with Christian. You'll love Christian. I never got that invitation, just saying. Well, because you try to be friends with him and I don't mix no more. Where? I want my friends to be when friends with my friends that? like that. When did I do that? <laughs> Melissa, let's keep talking you about that. I never you tried to be friends with Christian. I'm a Leo. Out. I'm, it's wearing me out. Even, I'm a Leo. I know, I know. You know, I love Scorpios. <laughs> like, she introduced me to the hookah lounge in New York. Now, now I'm there every day. Pergola. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he is. It's like a now, second Now, Christian, home. you know, the thing about Christian, even though he said, uh, when you come, bring an empty suitcase, I went and bought, like, four pairs of his shoes in New York to come with the shoes on. Yeah. I'm not going to ask him for free shoes. If he wants to give me some stuff, I'll take it. But he's a key key on the low. Christian really? He's fun, fun hang? Hilarious. Him I and his sister, it. their mouth is reckless. They're good people, though. <laughs> if I he's ever it. in town, we'll all hang out. I would Thank love you. it. I, but I, you can't get his number. Okay, I'm fine. I didn't fucking ask for his number. Sure, wait till I go to the bathroom. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Hair Love? Have you, any of you seen yes. Hair Love? Mm-hmm. Is it good? It's, it's sweet. so adorable. It's, it's, it's got a good ending, too. Yeah. Yeah, I liked it a lot. And I'm very happy that they were. God, Yvette, you're such a light. Oh, thank you. That's a good thing. Yeah, but I kind of could already tell that through the TV. Like Um, I said, I watch you, and you've you've been consistent, too. Like, you know when some mm -hmm. people do it for the cameras, but Mm. you've been consistent. I got to find that kind of energy. I haven't found it yet. What do you mean? It's in you. <laughs> to be a light. Nah. I'm to a, be a light. I'm a flashlight. No, no, no. <laughs> turn no, no, on no. and turn off. No, no, no. You know what it is with you? I think that you, I think there's a little hurt there. <laughs> and yeah, I, of course. And, right? And I think that you you got a little cynical, a little bitter. And I think you just need to take that crusty exterior off and then just lean into the light <laughs> yeah, that's Jason, already stop being so fucking Exfoliate, crusty. Exfoliate, man. No. Exfoliate. <laughs> take it like because, this. Because the minute I try to be nice, then boom, here comes, that's not here true. comes trouble. That's not they, true. They try me, vet. I be out here minding no, my business doing the Lord's work. Then boom. You know, <laughs> this is the thing you dip a toe in and get them told because I believe in a classy read. I don't mm-hmm. think there's anything wrong with a classy read. Yeah. I let people know, but then you just go right back to just doing it. You know, you know did what you it is. Did you see my Kevin Hart um, problematic? I did. What'd you think of that? I did. You know, Kevin's my friend. Like, I, I like Kevin. The first, the first pilot <laughs> I like sitcom Kevin. I ever did was The Big House with Kevin. I Hart. like Kevin. Yeah. Kevin and I talk. We both know we cool. I just, it's funny. That's why I keep bringing it up. Yeah. What'd you think about it? The problematic? Yeah. I thought it was interesting. Now, yeah. I haven't seen, I haven't been in Kevin's life like that in probably 10 years, oh. so I didn't know a lot of it um but what i love about kevin and i've always loved about kevin is that he really does apologize when he messes up mm-hmm. he really is somebody we had a good, we yeah. had a good conversation i was surprised
Like, how cool he was about no, it. No, he really, he really is aware. He, his goal is to be a good man. Mm-hmm. And like I said, we all fall short. Everybody falls short. Um, he falls short well, though, because you know. it's a height. It's a height. Exactly. Yeah. Good lord. <laughs> but but when he does, he apologizes and tries to make amends. And yeah. I think that people forget one that he's he's young and he's figuring it out. Yeah. And that's yeah. that's just what life is nah, about. He was cool. You yeah. know, I mean, I never, I didn't, I don't not like him. But I was surprised Rihanna saw it too. She said she saw it. Mm-hmm. But you know, that's the thing about the internet. Yeah. That's why I keep. It's telling, everywhere, man. So I keep telling young people or older people, who however old it's you for can life. be. life. You can be anything you mm-hmm. want, anywhere you want with this internet. You really can. You can create a whole lane for yourself. You haven't done a podcast or created a podcast? I haven't. I, I, you know, I don't know if she's got the time because you're such a working actress. Yeah, you've you got so was, many gigs. You know, it feels like it would require a lot. It does <laughs> no, require no, a no, lot. But it, it could be what you mm. create. Like yeah. us, we have two shows a week, so mm-hmm. we know we got that one day we got to do two shows. Mm-hmm. But uh, you could maybe it's once a week, maybe it's once yeah. every other week, maybe it's once a month. I don't. You could create your. Somebody own. did say something to me that made me go, "That might work." They said, "What I do on Twitter, I could do on a podcast, mm-hmm. right?" And it would reach more people yes. instead of just sitting there responding to everybody's whatever. I could just go, "This is what we're talking about this week," Man. and get it done. So that alone made me go, "Dad, save so much time if yeah. I was off of Twitter." <laughs> Ooh, that so you're a, a tweeter. Oh, it's a trap. Well, you, I used to be a tweeter, but it's, my shit was so reckless. I had yeah, to delete it all. <laughs> I think I had Alyssa. Didn't I tell you to? Delete Lead all my mm-hmm. tweets. We had like eighty four thousand tweets. You had to get rid of all of them. Yeah, Did I you to, archive them? I used to Henny and tweet. Oh, yeah, them tweets. You know, my nickname too. for him is Yvette. Like, it's scorched earth. Oh. Not anymore. I've, I've, I, if you, I, my, I've calmed down. Pastures yeah. now. Yeah, because yeah. now I'm like, I'm forty two. I'm grown out now here. Now, now, you, now you're just a grenade launcher. <laughs> yeah, I just throw a bomb at your ass. It's yeah. all right. All right. So, yeah. so what's next? So you're, you're, you're nominated for awards. Yeah. You're gonna, you're eventually gonna become one of the co-hosts on the View, or you're, you're gonna take somebody's <laughs> job. They don't need everybody. Abby's gone now. Yeah, Abby's gone. And they're never gonna give it to Anna. Why not? Well, she, lives in, well, she lives in Miami. She doesn't want to. She, oh. she, it's 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 a travel thing for her. I love it's, it's her for though. Me. She's, I Navarro's like her. She's amazing. She's amazing. Yeah, yeah, she's great. And yeah, but they, I think as they well. want somebody younger though. I, don't, I think she's a little older for what they're looking for. You're younger. Uh, I'm not conservative though. They want you know they what I mean. Conservative. And, yeah, Anna's, Anna's conservative. Yeah. Well, Trump has kind of pushed Anna to not be conservative. Yeah. I mean, like. Yeah. No, she just hates him. Yeah. 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 She's still very much a Republican, Why? but she is not going to make you know excuses for his behavior right. like all the other spineless. But motherfuckers sometimes, don't you want to just kick Megan off the stage? I don't. I, you know, it's so <laughs> just funny. Like elbow her right no, off the no, edge. No, no, no. She and I actually bonded. We met when her dad was sick, and my dad has, as I said, dementia. So we bonded as two two girls who love their dads who and they're sick mm. so i see her in a, a completely different way mm-hmm. um you know i know i know that there's things that have been said and done that i'm like come on megan mm-hmm. but um but i i'm giving her space because she's also young i'm giving her space to work through whatever she's dealing with with her father and hopefully it'll it'll smooth out some things mm-hmm. for her and it'll just be a little better but yeah no i i i know her differently i met her differently mm-hmm. so so do you, do you know Derek Monroe that does the hair up there? I do. You know he has a new um, digital video. I did it. You, I did, did you his do it? show. I did his show. It's so, it's it's so good. good right? Yeah, I gave He's him, a good host. I gave him feedback. He has a new show. I forgot what it's called. We'll put it up here yeah. on the screen. But he had interviewed Whoopi. I'm going to go watch your episode. Yeah. He's a natural. No, I said he's, he did a good job. No, he is a natural. He's a good looking guy, you guys. He's really handsome. It's about beauty. and. Mm-hmm. But I, what I love about him is he took my book to Sunny. This is why mm-hmm. I go and talk about like... We got to, we support could celebrate. be a lot yeah. better if we all just support each other. Yeah, like yeah. That. I agree. Yeah, I agree. All right, well, listen, I, you can come back anytime. Really? I'm, I'm going to get your mm-hmm. number. Okay. I'm going to try to get you to co- go to Kanye's church. You don't have to go. <laughs> we can at least go to Four Seasons for brunch. I would love we that. Definitely that would be do that. Fun. This yeah. Sunday. And fun. then what else could we do? Uh, we we'll do something. We can do something. We'll go hang out on Have the rooftop to- of the Waldorf Astoria. No, I'm going to take her to a gay strip club with Tiffany. Woo! Okay, well, Tiffany that Haddish? too. Yes. Yeah. Guys, you're trying to scandalize me. I don't think my eyes are ready. No. <laughs> scandalize <laughs> I'm a, I'm a ta- it, We'll call it research. It'll be the percentage <laughs> you know, of black you know, men that are unavailable you, to you because uh, they're yeah, too that, busy so I'll leave, I'll leave, leave out crying. <laughs> um, you, you, know, you know I'm PG-13, right? So just be Be gentle with me. Yes. Okay, we'll just go to brunch. Yeah. Maybe some Pilates. I don't do Pilates. I don't do Pilates. We can watch them do Pilates. I told you. I told you. Waldorf Astoria. A rooftop. There we go. That's where we should Done. go. Yeah. It's too public for me. I'm probably. Oh, person. for fuck's sake. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Yvette, you can come back anytime. Thank yes. you. Right. Come to the Image Awards. 
I'm going to reach out to y'all today. He's not gonna be in town. Oh, he's not oh, in town. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. Not be but, in but, town. but I'll send my I'll team and yeah, we'll, we'll send the my people. I y'all send it. me for real. And you know I'm here because of Alyssa. Like she 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 she's has been she has been called. And... She has not called me about a guest <laughs> like this. Like you know, when's your schedule? She needs to come uh, here. She's been honest. Yeah, because so. we had a great time on the Bad Boys carpet, and and she was explaining how she had this beautiful setup and she had her own section, and it was like did she we? did a, yeah, and she their own little kiosk little thing, and she who, who did that for us. Oh wow! I and she did know. an amazing job, and she said that it was hard to get people to come and, and speak. And I'm like, what? Are you, why? I'm gonna tell you, like Martin Lawrence follows us, and, yeah. and we can DM him Samuel Jackson, a lot of our people, and they're they're there for us. Yeah. I don't know what it is. I I'm trying to really step out of it to look yeah, at it to see because um, we're not nasty. We could yeah. be a na- we we could be nasty because I would say to say to people that you don't like the people you know like the celebrities are creating the mm-hmm. content. The fans can't get enough of it. Right. And we report it, but then we're demonized. It's right. like we report what y'all are doing and we're giving y'all what you need. Mm. So and it's, it's also giving them an opportunity to actually speak about it if it's something that is is mm-hmm. a little rough. Mm-hmm. They have a space to come and, and have a conversation. We never about attack it. our guests, and that's the thing I said, you know, we should be able to we should have a platform where our people could run to explain yeah, their explain perspective. Their stuff, yeah. Or 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 you could deal with the TMZs who will report that you die before your family even finds out. Mm. But you'll still call them when you want to be tipped off somewhere because that's just the sick shit that we live in. It's crazy. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's, it's crazy. But you're not that. You're everything, and we appreciate Aww, you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Had a good time, guys. Shout yeah, out to we loved Ohio. It. Thank you. Yes, East Cleveland. Come awesome. back anytime. I will love it. All right, we love you. We're thank out of here. Brother. Peace. Peace. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. What up, YouTube? Thank you for watching this reckless show. Yeah, and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And also don't forget to share and leave a comment because we are reading.